I'm going to do a final video to every fake progressive who is considering not voting for Kamala Harris this election. But this is a clip from my stream where I go over some pretty disgusting things Jill Stein and the Green Party says. Um, they are gross. They are anti-progress. They are overall just bad people. These are not real organizers. Um, they are not concerned with communities that are struggling around the world. They would rather see the world burn before they will actually care about orchestrating political power to organize for anything real or fundamental. And it's really depressing. So I'm going to make sure I have some high effort content leading up to the election. Um, that's going to be one of the videos, but there will be others as well. Please consider liking and subscribing as well so you can see that when it does happen. Um, drop a comment. My memberships are open for the channel again. And if you have any ideas for Pennsylvania, I do live here. I'm looking for different podcasts and radio shows that are center left, center, center right, whatever. I want to go on these shows before the election. I want to do a mini self tour of Pennsylvania. If you can find any shows like that, email me or shoot me a message in discord. I really want to do this. Please let me know. Uh, but anyways, let's get to the Jill Stein stuff. I hate everything. I hate everything. Everything sucks. Everything's stupid. Um, I hate everything, and I also hate everything. So, uh, yeah, the Green Party recently is doing amazing things to help literally no one. Uh, so right here, Jill Stein's running mate calls Kamala the black face of white supremacy and a modern-day Nazi. Eras, we see the collective forces of white supremacy gathering to demonize armed resistance to oppression, white supremacy, genocide, and European barbarism. <clears throat> Here we are again, this time with the black face of white supremacy, Kamala Harris, repeating repeatedly debunked Hospera lies, <laughs> rape allegations, always the prelude to every mass lynching in the United States of America, once again being deployed by white supremacists, this time to justify the mass lynching of the Palestinian people. The ignominious, infamous Kamala Harris and Joe Biden will go down in history as modern day Nazis, just as in previous. Wild. Okay. Absolutely wild right there. Um, yeah. So we already know our opinion on the Green Party. Uh, but also here, uh, this is a really interesting interaction. So fresh from attacking. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but Jill Stein and Butchware are now, are now attacking me as a rat a house n-word and an fbi agent no less a great way to help the palestinians uh and stop genocide and jill stein this is a lie i never attacked them nora uh and i never called you a rat or anything else we all know you want to put you want everyone to vote uh vote uh sorry i got caught up there to vote blue no matter genocide no matter what side no matter genocide but you can make that case without spreading misinformation and he says down here bush did which okay yeah right here I, you see that you see that okay and jill stein says oh so you're admitting you lied why don't you delete your tweet and issue a correction and an apology what kind of journalist are you bro your vp said this they're talking about your entire campaign i know that jill stein's not an adult but as an adult person who's engaging in politics especially when your like main goal is supposedly to help people um, who are suffering you can't just be like oh yeah my v my vp says that he did not represent the campaign actually uh maybe you should give an apology the green party shouldn't apologize for this you should apologize to us for spreading fake news by associating me with my vp and this has been happening all over the place too with many green party members just openly saying hey by the way our only goal now we're not going to pretend like we care about anyone at all our only goal is to see the des destruction of the West, pretty much. Make no mistake that this rumble of abandon guarantees a failure for the vice president, the loss of Michigan, and the loss of the White House. That we can depose the leaders who sit atop a superpower, a success that will happen immediately when we know the results on the 5th of November. A success that will happen immediately. What kind of success do you get from this other than feeling good about yourself and being able to say that you're better than everyone because of your moral posturing? I cannot stand this happening all of the time. They are traitors to progressive causes. They do not care about helping literally anyone. 
It's terrible. They are teaming up with the fascists because they care more about causing disruption and disrupting the liberal system. They care far more about causing chaos than they ever cared about actually helping people. They would let the entire world die before they they would uh, before they would actually confront political realities and work within any system other than the one they want to produce better outcomes. I don't care what system I'm in. I'm going to try to do whatever can pragmatically and realistically work to help the most people, to end the most amount of suffering throughout the world. And for the people in Palestine right now, in Gaza right now, this approach of making Democrats lose at all costs. I know you're saying AOC is complicit in genocide. Joe Biden is complicit in genocide. Kamala Harris is a genocide Harris or whatever. But where is your role when you force or, or at least you push for Donald Trump to win, who is a far right, not even far right, but an authoritarian monster? What he is going to encourage in Palestine, what he's going to do to the Middle East in general. Um... Yeah, all that moral posturing, and you're probably going to be hiding and off Twitter again once it's not a presidential year, because you only come around in the presidential year to have yourself heard so you can yell, get some money from some foreign governments or whatever, um, and yeah, that's the only role Jill Stein and the Green Party is ever going to play in American politics, and she's in the background in this video, Boss. just standing there, just hanging out. Make no mistake that this rumble of abandon guarantees a failure for the vice president, the loss of Michigan, and the loss of the White House. That we can depose the leaders who sit atop a superpower, a success that will happen immediately. Amazing. When we know the results on the 5th of November. May and I know as well, if something really bad happens, and I can be sympathetic to many people, uh, you know, if they're, if they're going to be radicalized, maybe they have family members who are affected by this, um, I understand it, but it cannot be forgotten that far right groups, anti, uh, you know, illiberal far right radicals who want to see the entire world crash and burn and fall to authoritarian dictatorship. These people are funneling money into Cornell West and Jill Stein and also these movements taking advantage of this issue to use it for political points um, in order to take votes away from Harris to try and make Donald Trump win. The presidency, uh, they are they are on Team Donald Trump, and I put up different videos talking about this. And at this point in this conversation, you are pro Donald Trump. You cannot just be like, "Oh, I'm gonna force Harris to lose." Forcing Harris to lose means Donald Trump gets to be commander in chief, and we all know what Donald Trump is gonna do once he's back in office and he's able to actually lead the military and decide where aid goes. And by the way, there's not aid going anywhere. He's gonna tell Israel to go further than ever before. Um, and yeah, when that happens. I hope you're still organizing in the same way. And by the way, Donald Trump's probably going to make it almost Im impossible to organize in a safe manner. Um, but yeah, who cares about that? I care about feeling right right now. I want to be morally correct. I can't handle my morals. Oh, my morals are being challenged because, because I need to vote for a lesser of two evils. Oh no, that's the most difficult thing I've ever gone through in my life. Imagine the privilege. And not only privilege, again, very... You know, people in very weak positions being taken advantage of. I'm very sensitive to that. To that, um, but most of the people I know are very privileged, who are just like, "Oh, I'm not voting for for Kamala because it's too hard. It's too hard for me morally." 